expiring correct all right sorry so, i wanted to record that no. oh, that's okay we are we're really excited to see um see uh the senator and i'm excited for elliot after um designing curriculum for us or supports for us for so long i'm really excited for him to see uh, who he's designing for one of the um the first steps when it comes to design is empathy and really understanding who your user is and i think that Elliot visiting our school and visiting our area will help him really understand how um, we have unique challenges and and the things that we face here in rural Michigan might be a little bit different than Southeast Michigan, but uh, at the heart of it, kids are kids and some of the things are the same. And some of the things that engage kids uh, there also engage kids here. So uh, Elliot, we are going to welcome seeing you at the end of the week with that team as they do a walk through third school. So like I said, um, I'm going to leave it in your hands and Elliot, you'll walk through the updates. We have another training at two, but that training is with me. And they're going to sit through listening to me talk about assessments. So if you run long, not a big deal. I'm following you up. There is another URL for the teachers to join that meeting but it won't start until Elliot is done. So I'll, I'll jump back into this meeting and see where you are. In the meantime, uh, Dan and I are gonna be uh, interviewing uh, possible another possible member of the team uh, and seeing um, if we can get some more um, paraprofessionals and teachers to help us um, as we go into the new year. I think we still have a couple of spots to fill. So we're gonna jump out and do that work while you do this work, okay? Okay. All right, see you in a little bit. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. Thank you. Um, we're still waiting for our, <laughs> our main presenter, Liat, but I wanted to say thank you to all of you for coming today and persevering last year. I, I remember September, October, there were issues. And Josh, who's on the line here, he, was, uh, he made calls, phone calls to some of you at home, some of your parents, the students' parents, and the point is, we will make it work. We will make it work. Um, technology, when it works, is wonderful. And we all know that. But when it doesn't work, you want to kill. <laughs> so, so it's, uh, uh, I understand. I do understand. And I think that's what's happened to Liat. She moved from Ann Arbor to uh, Atlanta literally three days ago. And so something is awry. Um, but um, we'll see what we can do to sort of cover <laughs> my Evans. Uh, Denise, what do you think? Do you have a piece? Um, You're muted. Well, oh, sorry. Can you hear me now? I should yep. be all right. Um, yeah, yeah Leon has our main roadmap. I was just going to see if she could um, share that we were kind of, we kind we went through the presentation at least twice yesterday, but this wasn't part of our rehearsal. So I apologize <laughs> for that. Excuse me, like Elliot said, she's never, um, so it must really be a technical difficulty. But um, if I can get her to share that, I just kind of, you know, want to follow so we have that that order or I can I can always uh, flip ahead to or then come back. Um, I think that's what we should do. Let's go okay. to what you were going to show and then let okay. you come back around. Okay, well, um, first of all, and I've been, I was on last week, I think it's New Teachers was last yeah. week, and I'm Denise Gallimore. Um, this is my first year not in the classroom in 30 some years, so I'm not quite sure how I'm acting or doing. I was in um, with one of our, I'm sure you've met Monique Coleman, one of our um, lead road mappers. Um, I taught in Genesee where she um, is, and I did a hybrid last year with the two days and then it was four and then it was zero and all of that. So um, with this platform, again, um, we survived last year and we're excited to share today um, because it's my understanding all of you have you know used it last year and, and to share the amazing updates because I can already see in the, uh, the chat, you have worked with Josh and you know that uh, Josh is always working and making this better. So um, that's what Leon and I were um, preparing today and, and starting with, you know, some of the, the programs or the apps, the nodes that you're familiar with and, you know, showing you the, the new additions. So she was um, going to start with the, like the writer and the PDF and I was going to um, come in. And so I guess I'm just following my notes um, to where we wanna show you 
more about, and I, I, and I believe this is from feedback from your um, staff is distributing and monitoring and assessing. And that's the two of the, the buttons that I, I use every single day last year in, in my hybrid and my um, virtual experience. So, um, and if she joins us, it just, I'm just kind of looking back and forth for that. We did, we do have a very nice roadmap for you to go back to too, I promise. It's just not, um, I, I um, lost one of my roadmap access this morning, but that's another whole different story. So, hey, that's part of all of this though, is what we do, you know, this technology, it works perfectly some days and other days, um, just like, you know, I always say to the kids, and most of the time they're right there to fix it, right? So, and I do apologize I, for this screen of mine. I don't know what the light is um, or why it's like that. So that I, I don't know, but let me go to my share screen. I hope it, work um let's see if i can do that um let's see sorry wait it's funny how let's see let me go back out for one second i'm sorry i gotta yep there it is um okay all right so um, hopefully you can see where I am in the distribute um, tab. And Leon had, had uh, again, uh, I'm, I'm kind of working back into this presentation where we had already have gone through some of the things, but talking, um, do, um, again, if somebody on your staff would want to, you know, tell me, do you normally Denise, distribute? Leon's here. Leon's, oh. Oh. he was here. She okay. was here a second ago and she's gone. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Oh, uh -huh. hey. there's my, my saving uh, grace. Cookies, cookies, <laughs> right when you need them, right? I'm, I'm actually tethering from my phone. I thank the Lord because otherwise you would have seen the presentation from here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I didn't have the main map, um, Liat, in my my. So go ahead. I'm. I was just going. I was going ahead and, and going to my piece before yours. So now it'll really make sense and flow. You want to complete what you were doing? I really Before didn't get any further than just yeah. saying hi. I'm going to distribute. So I, I think it'll make it'll flow a lot better the way we plan. So sorry, everyone. Cool. Thank you for your patience. Yeah, we, we apologize. I'm sorry. Uh, let me share my screen very quickly. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Close all the email ones. Professor, we need to talk. My UMH account is acting out. Oh. Well, okay. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Right now? Um, as we speak. <laughs> Can you share it with? Leah, uh, with me and Denise, and then we can share, share the screen. I can share the screen, but I'm, I'm hoping that the maps, okay. So- um, Yep, there you go. Because all of you have already, or most of you have already used roadmaps, we are not gonna go through all the apps and features. We're just highlighting the changes that were made in the last year, um, some updates. And on the way, we're gonna, and we're gonna show them on our curricula because in case, um, um, I know some of you may have not used it. We do offer K-5, all the core subject areas. We offer math, engaged New York math. We offer Mesa reading and writing. It's very similar to the Lucy Calkins, um, so the workshop uh, method. And then we have M Mesa MC3 social studies. In science, we have MLPBL and phenomenal science. And again, we offer all of these full year for K-5. So I'm going to show you our with you, and we highly encourage you to kind of take a look. Those are samples. You're going to see some uh, first grade math, um, some fifth grade social studies, just to give you a sample of what we have. Um, am I still on? Yep. Let me interrupt for just a second. Um, we'll, folks, we'll make this roadmap available to you so that you can yeah. then go through it, you know, a little more slowly at your pace because uh, you probably saw that first slide with the, the first roadmap because you go back to that one and you're saying 
whoa, we didn't see that before. We've never seen those colors before. And Josh is smiling because he implemented something you know, last month where you have the colors and, and I mean, I'm gonna it talk looks about like it. I'm gonna talk about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> no, I won't, but I just, the point, the point is there's a lot of stuff. You'll have this roadmap, so don't worry. Okay, um, you're actually, it. you're gonna have this one that has the samples of the maps uh, of the different lessons. Uh, the other ones are all the full, the full PD that you've done last year. Um, so you don't have to do that again. Uh, so I'm gonna open up uh, an Engage New York map for you. And hopefully, there we go. And this is, for example, a first grade map. And you can see all the pieces and go through them slowly. And on the original map that you're going to have, we also highlighted what each piece means. And um, you're going to have eyeballs of different things to notice, like the differentiation that we offer here on the side and all your uh, teacher resources that we have available for you if you're teaching using our lessons, like a video showing you how to teach the lesson that we have for you there. Um, so I'm going to, again, highlight only the differences. And already visually, you can see we now have order numbers. So now if you uh, click on an activity or a node, um, on the left bar, you now have the sequence option. You still have the color options. You still have the sh shapes. You, can, you still have the images. Now you can add numbers. Um, so for example, one, it can be 3B. And it just pops a little better, we think, for the kids, uh, making it, again, more visual for them. You can, again, still use the arrows, give them a path of learning, but that's um, our ordering. That's a new feature. Also, if you go to Flipbook, that's our animation tool, and we also used it a lot as a notebook. You can now add um, pages on the back and in the front, and I'm going to show it in a second. Josh has been very busy. Yeah. <laughs> and again, this is an animation tool, but we also use it. So we use it a lot in science for modules, uh, for models, but we can also, but you also use it a lot for notebooks uh, because it has the drawing options and uh, audio options. So your students can add pages to the end of the notebook, to the, to the middle of the notebook, to the beginning of the notebook. And that's great because then they don't have to flip through 30 pages of stuff they've already done. They can start where they're starting uh, or if they need to do a revision or if they miss something, they can pop a page in the middle. So again, it's on the plus sign here at the bottom. Now you have a page on front or new page at the back. And I'm not gonna talk about what you just saw in a second. Uh, I'm going to tell you a bit about it later. Uh, all of our apps can now be exported. So since this is an animation tool, this one is going to be exported to a GIF. Uh, you click on the three dots on the top right corner and you click export. So, and you can choose to export just a piece of it or the whole, I'm going to select the whole thing and click export. And it's going to automatically um, download it to my drive. And you can also open it in your drive. You'll see in a second. Um, I can view it on my drive or just click done. So that's a way for you to download your kid's work. And I'm going to show it on PDF Pal. So if you have worksheets or if you're using it for assessments and you need hard copies of what your students have done, you can also print that out. And PDF Pal and Writer are going to export as PDFs. Um, this is the only one that's exporting as a GIF. Okay. And... I'm going to now open, okay, so that's the flip book, the exporting. Let's talk a little bit about PDF because this one has one of the most exciting changes. You're going to love it. Um, this is where you put all your worksheets um, or presentations, if you like, so your kids can notate on those. Um, and now we have audio on it. So you can record instructions or your students can record their reading if you're doing a reading assessment. You can give your students audio feedback and they can give you feedback for math. For example, hearing the math maps, that can be a running record. They can record their thinking as they explain how they came to the solution for you. Um, 
It's also great for the non-readers. And also in all of our lessons, uh, we're revising them now. We added, we read the instructions for you. So if you have kindergartners or first graders, second graders, the instructions are even up to fifth graders. The instructions are read to them inside the worksheet. And also, as you can see now, the instructions pop at you. So if your kids miss the instructions here on the main map, it's here on the side. I'm going to show you what a student version is going to be like. So how the kids see it. If they click on this worksheet, if they forgot to read this or they forgot to click on the audio button and they don't know what to do now, no excuses. It pops at right at them as they open the activity. It also, it's gonna have a speakerphone here at the bottom so they can listen to it. This is coming up uh, very shortly. And they can always refer back to it if they click on this little exclamation mark at the top right corner, the instructions pop back up. So they can always come back to the instructions if they need that. And as you can see what I was talking about with the little speaker phone, if you click on that, you can add the file anywhere you want on the page. Your kids can do the same. And this is a sample. You're gonna hear my voice reading the instruction. Write the number. So they can have it as they work along because a lot of time the worksheets have multiple assignments. So that's easier, it's breaking that down for them. Um, so that's a cool feature and I'm gonna show the export like I promised. Again, the th uh, three dots on the top right corner and export. And for example, if your students have answered, I'm going to very quickly answer a question. Let's see if I'm going to make a mistake. Let's see if they uh, pay, if they're paying attention. <laughs> um, so here they need to write the number. One less 30 is 29. And here, for example, you need to cross off a 10. And now that's that's my those are my answers. You can export. I'm sorry about the slowliness. That's totally my internet. It works much, much faster, I promise. I'm having it's a day. I'm having technical. <laughs> So I'm going to click again, um, I'm going to click PDF, select all, export, and you can see that my answers are also going to be printed out. So again, if your kids are working on it, you have a record of what they've done. And if I click export, it's again going to download it automatically to my drive. And done. So any questions so far, because I know I speak fast. Just unmute, just unmute and ask. We're here. What do you think of that audio feature, folks? Do you think you're, you're gonna use it? Do you think your kids will use it? I think it'll be really helpful, especially helping um, our students that have IEP accommodations in place. Yeah. I yeah. also like the instructions um, coming at you when you first open it. I really like that. Yeah. See, we that. listen. <laughs> yeah. I like that now you can refer back to those with the exclamation mark because a lot of time you forget midway what are the next steps. So now they can always come back to that and they don't have to move between tabs. Um, so right now I have a reading lesson open for you. This is a third grade reading lesson. Um, all of our lessons have the same structure, but again, we gave you some samples if you choose to use it or just pieces of what we created so you can see what it looks like. And this is a sample of the eyeballs, again, giving you, highlighting different features that you can also use on your maps, but that we implemented in our lesson, like the record, the record of learning, the notebook is actually the same notebook from the beginning to the unit to the end. It's like a real notebook in real life, it follows through. So they can always come back to what they've done and they don't lose anything, they can do revisions. So we are highlighting that in case you didn't know that's a feature. And if you want that in your maps, we also have how-to videos showing you how to do it. I'm not gonna go into that because those are two minute videos and they're very technical, but you can do it because you have experience, you know how to use roadmaps. Um, so you can do it for yourselves. Um, and then, for example, this collaborative area, I'm going to talk about it in a second. What I want to show right now is Writer, the changes to our Writer, the lovely YouTube app <laughs> where you can put um, videos and audio and text for your students. So 
it's gonna uh, have a little bit of a facelift. You can't see it right now, but it's gonna look like this. So again, it's gonna be more visual with icons instead of all the text. If you see right now, if you click on the plus sign, you have the options. And if you click, for example, photo or video, it's, it's very wordy. Take new photo or video, select. And yeah. we're changing it to icons. Yes. I'm, so, I'm sorry to interrupt. Nope, Can you try not. refreshing your page? Because it should be live right now. You just, I don't think you have the latest version. So go back to writer and try refreshing if you would. Oh, sure. It should be live now? Yeah. So hopefully, let's see. Your browser might have cached it, so it might take a little bit of time, but I'm like, I'm, I'm looking at it right now in the, the latest version. Of it. Sorry, sorry. Sure, you know what? Even better. See, it's updating live <laughs> for you folks. <laughs> and it could be just my internet. I, I, I didn't have any internet all morning. I'm, yeah. It's amazing you got it back now. I mean, just. Oh, I didn't. I'm using my phone. Uh, <laughs> and it's working, which is astonishing. It's all working. Let's there we go. There it's it amazing. So it's going to be more visual, and your kids can see with the icons if they need to take a picture, if they need to take a video, searching YouTube videos. Um, so oh. even so, now it's even kindergartners can do it, and it looks beautiful, Josh. I love this yeah. change. It's amazing. Go ahead and try clicking on the camera. I want to show you that. The video or the photo? The photo, sorry. Oh, you might have to do Okay, let's see. So what I wanted to show is that the, the recording, yeah, because you're, you're on Zoom, so your camera is, is, is using it. Click the back button on the left. This is back to Media Picker. Yep, can you disable your camera real quick in the writer? Or I'm sure. sorry, in Zoom, in Zoom. Now, now try again. Let's hope. try just the photo. Oh, this is the video. But okay, what, what I wanted to point out is now the actual recording is embedded in the page so the kids can record themselves while they're scroll, scrolling through and, and interacting with the page. Yeah. That makes sense. And this is with the photo. I changed it to photo. Okay. Okay. And, so. and also, sorry, sorry, I'm one more thing. So I, I tried, but I didn't get it in for this, for this meeting, but there's gonna be a third button for record there, which will allow you to record just audio. So it's gonna be like the PDF and the flip book. If they just wanna record their voice, you can do that. Sorry, go ahead. Awesome. I'm gonna show, I'm gonna show two tricks. Um, provided to you by Monique. She asked me explicitly to share with, the, with you these tricks. So first of all, if you're searching for your drive, and please may I not have embarrassing pictures on my drive. <laughs> um, if you're searching on your drive, I don't know if it's gonna happen for me today. Very slow. It's yeah. wonderful that you even got it working, so. Uh, you have an A to Z button at the top right corner, which allows you to search uh, for recently modified or recently opened. And we, that's very helpful because a lot of times the images or the pieces that we put in here are the last thing that we, that we kind of played with or downloaded. So that might help you with the search a little bit. Yeah, it's, it's not going to happen. I'm sorry. But believe me, there is an A to Z button at the top right corner. And it's going to help you search because, again, you can search by word, by the name, but you can also search by re recently added or recently modified. And one last trick is that, um, so right now, most of you probably put images or videos from your drive to Writer. You can also use copy paste if you add a header and then right click on an image. And I have an image here ready for to click, uh, to copy. I'm going to click. I, I did a right click copy image and then on writer i'm going to open a header sorry 
Heidi was happy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so I click the plus sign, I have a header, and then I can do a right click paste and the image is gonna be pasted here. So I didn't have to, um, there we go. So I don't have to uh, download, to upload it to my drive. Um, so for example, if you have like those icons or things, all of the images that are gonna show up here, by the way, with Google are OER, so you don't have to worry about it. But if you need a picture that's not OER, um, like from the Go Math stuff, you can just copy and paste it here and don't tell us. <laughs> And you can again. That's a beautiful it. thing. I love that. Wow. Provided you provided to you by Monique Coleman. This section was provided <laughs> was <laughs> sponsored by. Okay, so that's the those are the changes to um, writer. It's now more visual, and the search. I talked about the search and how to add an image uh, with copy and paste. Um, any questions about what I just showed? Okay. One um, other so thing, uh, if I remember, we're going to make this video available to you too, so that you can then, because uh, the things that Liat is saying might not be in the roadmap per se, but she's talking about it. So you can come back and watch the video for a little clip and, and take a look. Sorry. No, absolutely. Um, and again, all the how to videos that were available to you last year are still there. Again, we frequently ask questions. We're also updating those. Um, so if there's something that you want to know how to do and forgot or I didn't cover today, you can always refer to that or just shoot us an email. And I've made tutorials because, and I know Josh made tutorials because people wanted to know how to do something. So anything that you need, we'll make it, we'll make it happen. And on the map, what I want to show again is um, on the map that they're going to be having, they're going to see the samples. They're going to have um, a lot of little clouds explaining what each of the pieces are. And again, the eyeballs highlighting different features. And you, again, there are how-to videos showing you how to do those uh, things in your own map. Um, so I talk about the, I talked about the notebook, which is a running record. I also wanna talk about the collaborative area, uh, which is an awesome, awesome feature that allows you, so the whole map is gonna be done individually. The kid is watching the mini lesson on their own. Then if this is a reading map, so they go to go to get Epic and they do their reading, they write in their notebook. This is all individually and they can mess with each other's work. But then they have this collaborative area when they can work with a partner or in a group and or as a whole class, depending on what you, the teacher, decided uh, beforehand. And when they click on that, the share piece, then they're going to move to a different section that's going to be done together. So just like in a real lesson, you have parts that they do on their own and parts that they can do together. And I, again, we have how-to videos showing you how to do it, but if you're using our maps, it's already built in ready for you. Um, and I also wanna highlight the phone feature. And again, I know I, it's been here for a while. I know you know about it, but if you haven't used it, it's amazing. It allows kids to talk via um, uh, voice IP. So if you have some kids at home, quarantine, if, you're, and if you end, end up doing some sort of a hybrid thing, it's wonderful. It still allows them to be accountable and take part in the class activity, work together. We have a teacher, Dawn. She likes to do the math maps uh, in pairs or in groups. And the kids work together, some at home and some in school. Uh, or you are the teacher you, because, you're an because you're automatically a collaborator. You can jump in and help a group that needs help. Uh, or talk to a kid. So this is an awesome, awesome feature and we hope that you use it. And Denise can already, can, I can see she wants to tell you how amazing know, it is because I, I know I she just, used it. I, well, when you, I, I just get it, I, it, you're reminding me when you said what Dawn was doing and I was using it the same way. I had half of my students at home two days a week and the other two and that phone, I mean, it's just amazing. They're, they're all st still working on the, the concepts um, in their groups. And I also had students um, for, some of them were with our reading resource teacher down the hallway, um, intervention in other rooms, and they could still come and go on that phone, which, you know, it, you can use it and, and it's it, with colleagues, 
when we were planning and we were in different buildings in our uh, the school I used to work in, we had that phone, we would be in three different buildings planning our maps. And so um, again, I, I kind of hesitated in the beginning with that phone, but the more I used it and got familiar with it and, and how powerful and my students, um, you know, it just really is a powerful tool. And I get excited about when I heard about it, I'm like, yes. So, and there's just so many, so many um, avenues with that. Uh, still, I'm sure. Sorry. So I guess that was, oh, sorry. So that was a, a reminder and, and kind of like a, a quick view of all the different uh, changes and updates that uh, happened in the last year. Um, now we're going to do a quick reminder of things that you probably already know, but are the key components of using roadmaps. So we thought it would be valuable to give you a little bit of a reminder again on how to distribute a map and how to monitor and assess your students' work. Um, so Denise, take it away. I keep trying to find a, a better angle with this um, light. So again, I apologize. That's kind of where I started. Um, and I'm gonna make you dizzy, hang on. Um, when, before you came on, Liat, I kind of had skipped ahead, but I was asking them how they normally would distribute their roadmaps if anybody wants to, um, comment or any questions about anything so far i know we go fast because we we don't want to take up too much time but if there's anything that anybody needs to know before i go back to that is there any questions that anybody has feel free to just unmute and ask or maybe there's something in the chat um, also please put your emails in the chat uh i asked earlier but i forgot to remind because then i'll build a new list so that i can send you folks stuff so if you would put your emails in the chat, that would be very helpful. Um, uh, I just wanted to uh, just double check about when you're doing the, the collaborative node, but then the rest is independent. That hasn't really changed still. You have to distribute that collaboratively with the, the groups or the class groups. If you want like the whole class to do a concept map in the one node, but then the second node you're doing an independent map activity you got to do distribute that collaboratively first and then you can distribute the whole map is that how that works still that hasn't there isn't a I yeah did, yeah okay. yeah Heidi um, I'm working on a version um, I think I described it to you in the past where there'll be a button inside the door where you can mark it as collaborative and then when it comes time to distribute you'll be prompted with uh, the option of great collaborative groups for each of those nodes that you've marked collaborative um, don't have that yet, but it is coming. It's in the works. I also, I know last time, you know, speed has been an issue in, in some cases, right? So the distribution has been, can be slow and loading your, your roadmap list. Um, I've got a version that, okay, let's say it might maybe take 10 minutes in the past to distribute a roadmap. It's down to a minute. Um, I'm just testing and getting it to work for, for you guys and you'll have it. Um, so the speed, you're gonna see speed increases very soon. And we'll keep you posted as that gets released. But Heidi, we're there. We're, we're, we're going to get it for you. It doesn't right, so sleep. I, it doesn't yeah. sleep. <laughs> right. So I'll go back to uh, this was, again, where we started earlier, the distribute off to the left on the toolbar. And um, Liat or, or Josh, if there's anything um, that you know I miss or something new that I'm not aware of. But um, I use this every day. I my, started my day in school and virtually both, whether I was half there or all there with um, the roadmap and distributing it. And it's just as simple as having your kids in your class in and going there and finding the map. Um, I'll just give you a quick example of one because I also lost my all my files today from my old school just this morning. That was a nice gift. Um, but anyways, here we did a, a, a great beginning of the year, uh, a story about family fun. So I want all the kids to have it. So once your kids are, are already in the system, then boom, you select your class. It was my second grade next. And it's a matter of, you know, each, I want each of them to have their own copy. And normally I use that for most, but also you can collaboratively distribute them, which is awesome when you get into knowing your kids and grouping and then to distribute. It doesn't take long at all, but it might today, the way the, the spinning seems to be going. And then boom, they, they have it. Um, and it's, you know, I, when I first started with roadmaps, I went right to Google Classroom, but that, that was a couple extra steps. So I found it once Josh got me uh, comfortable with, with this and distributing, it just, it's, you know, normally it would 
it's, I only, you know, it would take just a few seconds. So I, um, is there any other updates on that distributing, Josh, that I should mention? That, because I, I, I don't, whoops, there it is. And then- Not, uh, not yet, but coming soon. Okay, yeah, all right, I just wanted to be sure. Because I mean, oh my gosh, you've done so many. So you could put it into your Google Classroom or the link, and I normally, um, you know, use the link and then put it into their their opening page, and then boom. Um, again, I there's just every single thing is is there, um, and just a, cl a click here and a click there. Because um, I I'm not sure how you guys were distributing um, last year, and the monitor and assess is the other piece that. Um, I, again, I used it daily. And I think one of the things um, at least we um, had to face was the accountability of who's doing what and our, our you know, just, it's just such an easy way to quick check each student's work instead of going to each roadmap. So I can go right here, I'd start right at the top. I'd go to their, um, you know, to what I'm looking for, whether in this case I did the family fun and then boom, next student, next student, just to even see if, if they had, entered that or you know again we one of our team members Kristen with her math she just gets on here right away when the you know makes sure that it's all in there and, and goes through um it's it's just you know those quick clicks once you're in there right through alphabetically and you can you can monitor that um again you can make the comments you can you can and I believe yes I I, I thought that's new right Josh the export on that but on that page because that's the collaborify right okay i'm talking to myself but um i haven't used it since june but i i just that monitor and assess because so many teachers say how do you how do you keep up with the grading and and how do you keep up with knowing if it's not real paper well this is the 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 button that you know i can do a quick check in the classroom or after they're gone or at home and there are videos that help you Again, review because Denise is going fast. Oh, but there sorry. Are, no, it's all right. No, but yeah. if you have to, because we. But there are videos that you could then look at and just go slow through the videos. Mm -hmm. Here, or just ask things. us again. Um. Okay. Yeah. So can I, can I add gonna... to this real quick? Sorry. Sure. Go ahead. Yeah. So um, a couple things that have changed here in the monitor and assess that I just realized. Um, if you click on. Um, Denise, if you would click on the activity, so it says my family fun right there. Yeah. Yep. We have a PDF one. Oh, okay. So um, for PDF pal activities, there's gonna there's a button just to the right that'll allow you to download the entire class's PDF pal as a as a group of PDFs. Let's see if um, I have that. No, I did yesterday, but I lost that file today. Sure, sure. Uh, so, sorry. You're, so you're able to download in bulk the entire class. All of their activities as PDF, and that's also going to be available soon for Writer and Flipbook. Um, but it's already there for PDF Power. Um, another thing is if you go, if you go ahead and open, go ahead and select a student, and you can leave the activity okay. there. Whoops. Let me go back to one of, because I don't even know what that one is. Um, so select a student. I'll start at the top. Yeah, leave the no activity. I want to show the roadmap here. So another thing is now that um, now in Monitor and Assess, the roadmap opens in Roadmap Builder. So you have the ability now to go in there and edit each student's roadmap if you want. You could give feedback in there or you could uh, change a node, delete a node, add a node. So you can kind of differentiate through Monitor and Assess after it's been distributed. Does that make sense? Yeah, wow. Again, there'll be videos to explain this. This is new. Uh, probably don't have a video yet, but we will be making it. That's awesome. So again, now if they've already sent maps, they can make changes and leave notes for the students. And as they're going through, as they flipping through the students. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be wonderful. So yeah, oops, let me put that one. Any questions on that? And again, I know we're just giving you like that splash but it's like a fire hose i know um and it's just you the the best way to do it is just to to do it and use it and and you know we'll have those reminder videos for you but that was so powerful just keeping up with their work coming in this way um, um do you want me to go to um so before, 
Okay. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you two things that were available last year, but now that you have created a lot of maps and you probably want to reuse them, those uh, two short tricks are going to make your life much easier so you don't lose all the hard work and all the things that you've created last year. And then Denise is going to show you some of the awesome new stuff that we've made for you for the first week of school. So we got you covered. We've got, um, we've added SEL, we've added um, fun enrichments. So all of the oldies, but goodies, the new things, the old, the old um, new first week maps are still there. So if you have new students or new classes that have not used those before, you still have my first roadmap and all of that. But now we have many, many more resources for the first week or even a couple weeks of school for you to use. But before I do, I just wanna very, very quickly show two things that you can do so you can already use the things that you've created. So one thing you may not have, no, you may not know, am I sharing? Can you see my screen? Yep. yep. Okay. Yep. Um, is that if you click on the plus sign and you click on Collaborify Roadmap and Create, you can embed maps that you already created into new maps. So you don't have to copy each activity or each node individually with the right click, copy, paste. You can just plop in a full map that you already have made. Uh, you can use our lessons, or if you've made, I don't know, like a Monday from last year, and you just want to tweak it and change it a little bit, but for the most part, it's still a Monday, it still works, you can just put it in. So how you're going to do it is, like I said, I clicked on, I clicked the plus sign, Collaborify PDF, and then instead of, I'm going to click on, on the word file here. When the drawer opens on the left, I'm going to click on the word file, and I'm going to click on change file. Now, this is, uh, what's going to pop up is a list of all of the maps that I have, and I can search the map that I want. For example, I want, um, I want the math lesson. I want this math lesson, Engage New York 1.4.8.5. I can click on it click select, and the whole map, the whole lesson that I have already made, the whole math lesson that I've already made is going to be uh, embedded now in this map. So that's a quick way to embed or put in maps that you already created into new maps. Uh, you can still obviously copy just individual activities or lessons using the right click, but this is a quicker way to do it. And I'm going to delete it because I am working on the master copies. Uh, okay, another thing that are going to, uh, another thing that's going to be changed is um, the modify my roadmaps. You can, we will now be able to export a spreadsheet of all the maps that you have. Um, and I just wanted to show you some things that you can do on this page, because uh, you don't have to go to each map individually. First of all, if you can find the map, Try clicking on show nested roadmaps, because if it's a map that was created inside a map, let's say a Monday, and you created it in a weekly schedule, it might not pop up unless you click show nested roadmaps. And even Denise and I, we've been doing it for a couple of years. Just yesterday, we couldn't find a map because it was nested. So just make sure that you click this little cube here. And on the maps, another way, quick way to make copies, if you made a map last, last year and you want to use it, you want to make changes, you can click on the three dots on the right corner and click copy. And that's going to make a copy of the map. Once, it, once a copy has been created, you can add collaborators. Let's say I want to add Denise, who's my co-teacher, and we're going to work on this uh, lesson together or on this map together. We can, um, there we go, done. And now I have a copy. I can rename it. I don't even have to go into the map. I can rename it right here. Let's say I now want to call it, I don't want to call it copy of, I want to call it Engage New York, but this is my 2022 version. This is my new version. And I'm going to click done, save. And now it's called Engage New York 1.4.8.5 2022. I can add Denise, again, the three dots in the right. And I can add a collaborator or I can delete the map that I no longer need. So those are all things that you can do from this page um, with the maps that you already have that you've downloaded or already created. Okay, and then the repository has got, uh, got a little bit of a facelift too. Um, and now it looks like this. 
Uh, it's going to be much easier for you to search. You can search by grade level. You can search by subject. You can see how many maps are available for each of the categories. Um, so, for example, there are 140 writing maps all ready for you, done. Um, you can search by the curriculum because now we offer multiple curricula. We have, for example, for science, we have MLPBL or Phenomenal Science. So you can choose whatever works best for you. Um, we'll have searching by uh, standards coming soon. And please gi give us some time. Bear in mind that we are updating and revising some of our maps. So they may not all be in the repository right now, but they will be in all of our maps. Our start start with UMCDC, and so you know that those are ours, and the new versions have 21, 22 at the end, so you know you're downloading the newest, best version. Questions? It's a lot of information. Again, we'll make this all available, so you can go through it again. You can always ask us questions. Um, I'm going to put in the chat the email that you could use to send to us that a whole bunch of road mappers are on that email list. Somebody will answer it. So I will just remind you what it is. And I'll put it in the chat. There you go. Elliot, it's Julie. Hi, Julie. I'm back. Along with that, I had several teachers approach me who felt like they were drinking from the fire hose last year and felt like when they did their training back in August, they might have missed some things. Or they're in new roles. They're not really new teachers, but they're in new roles this year and might be using um, roadmaps differently. For example, I had somebody come from special ed who's now in a classroom and she wants to use it differently. Would there be a way for you to link in the chat or even send to us as email um, the links to the um, the training that that they did last year that was the um, the asynchronous training? Yes. In fact, we've updated it, added more to it. We will send you the URL for the sort of the run roadmap that has all the PD sub roadmaps, and then you can then send it out to your teachers, and yeah, then they so could use that. So if you feel yes. like I don't need a refresher, I just need a redo, which yeah. I sometimes need, like I go back and pull books off the shelf and revisit them. Um, so if you want to revisit what you did last year, Elliot will send that to us and I'll send that out. So don't get it confused with the update stuff though. This is, this is the stuff that's um, kind of the initial training. Yeah, the stuff that we'll send, it'll have I think five roadmaps now and it'll take about six to seven hours to go through it. If you just go systematically through it, um, you don't have to, you can go, you can, you can jump around, of course, but we'll send you that roadmap so that you can have the PD. Absolutely, Julie. Another uh, nice feature for our um, new teachers is they are currently going through that same training. So yes they will be up to speed here in a couple of weeks. And, and while they won't have the experience of the whole year behind them, like what many of our veteran teachers have, um, they will at least be able to speak the language. And we're always here to answer the questions. Absolutely. And some, now some of you, sorry. Some of you folks have asked questions you last year. Heidi, right? We, we're, we're there. We'll, we'll give you the answers. Any questions now? Again, a lot of information. Uh, sorry. And we are coming through a couple of days of the fire hose to Elliot. So people are exhausted. Yeah. And we're getting ready for, um, for tomorrow. So we'll start. No air conditioning in the hot. Yeah. I get it. I'm hot yeah. too. Yeah. Uh, We'll circle back and see you again. Okay. Thank you. Thank very you, much. folks.